anchors up, sails at full. Welcome to the Slipcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jaren. How are you doing today, sir? You know, um, I'm not going to complain too bad. How about that? I'm not going to complain too bad. Um, Kyle, I want to, I want to, I want to do a quick. Normally, we do the plugs at the end of the show. I want to do a quick plug at the beginning of the show. We had our Sloop Cats only episode come out this morning slash, well, this morning for for us. It's it's Wednesday where Kyle and I currently exist. Um, and it was a hot mess of so much fun. For once, for once, we actually talked about football because we had like just got done watching the, um, the uh, first playoff committee show, and that's what it is. It's it's a show, and so we just got done watching it, and then we like we're running through the the entire episode was us like running through scenarios for like an hour and 20 minutes and going off on stupid tangents it's one of the best uh patreon exclusive episodes we've ever done and uh you should everyone should join the patreon and listen well i wouldn't say we ran through scenarios we tried to fair fair we also we 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 talked a lot of conspiracy theory. Um, I I for one am annoyed with the uh, the prevalent storyline that ESPN somehow controls the playoff committee, which makes no goddamn sense. I'll say it, and if y'all want to come at me in the comments on Twitter or whatever, come at me. It doesn't make any sense that ESPN has control over the playoff committee. Zero logic behind that. Zero. And if you want to hear me argue with everyone in the call last night about why that's the case, you can go listen to Sloop Cats only. Ah, but that's not what we're doing today. We're, uh, we're doing Know Your Enemy Northwestern. Are we? Oh, we're going to try. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I mean, it's Western Northwestern start off the season great. They got the they got the victory over over Nebraska, and uh, yeah, that that that's it, Jared. That that that's it. That's their season. Northwestern it, it, it got it, Scott Frost fired. Congrats, Northwestern. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it downhill from there. Seven straight losses since their opening victory over in Nebraska and um yeah yeah ever since that ever since that win over in Nebraska they have not scored more than 24 points in a game I mean and we talked about a few weeks ago about how bad Iowa's offense is well, Northwestern is not that good either maybe, maybe better than Iowa's but not that good not that good no no no, Austin is it is not good. If ESPN had full control slash um full control, TN games would have been one half to push this weekend's rate. Oh, Tennessee. I think maybe you meant to say Tennessee, Georgia would have been one and two to push weekend ratings. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're, we're- but we're not talking about that. We're talking about Northwestern here, Jared. So <laughs> <laughs> Northwestern. Come on. I'm yeah, holding look, a baby. I, I got but, there eventually, Duncan. I got there eventually. I mean, look, where, where, where do you want to start with this Northwestern team? Not, it's They're bad. Not a good. It's not a good team. Not a good team. They're only averaging 17.9 points per game and lighting up 28.8 points per game. And yeah, they're. Not a good defense, not a good offense here. Like what what does Northwestern have going for them? I I think I I I, I like their uniforms. I'm a fan of the purple and the black. Uh you throw a little mm-hmm. bit of white and gray in there. Um they, they do that stripe across the chest, which is somehow both like unique but also classic. Um their the name of their mascot is is Willy Wildcat. And I'm a fan of alliteration. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm doing my best. 
I'm doing my Buckeye, best. Buckeye Matt mentions, um, yeah, they got a new stadium in the future. Yeah. And, yeah that may, it may be the, the, the new home for the, uh, the Big Ten uh, championship game. Are they supposed to get in on the new Bear Stadium action? I No, I don't think so. From my understanding. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so. Their quarterback is a really nice guy. Which one? Yeah, there, there's there's two guys here. Uh, <laughs> well, there's uh, the old Ryan. one. There's the new one. Yeah. Uh, Helinski yeah, would be Ryan. the old one. Yes, he is. Ryan he is Helinski no longer is, their quarterback. Yeah, it's uh, Brennan Sullivan, who's taken over since the uh, Wisconsin game. And even though Helinski is available, free to play, it, it seems like they're kind of giving giving the reins to the young, the younger uh, quarterback here. Go check out his foundation. Um, yeah, everyone go do that. We're not going to do it live on podcast, but everyone, yes, go do that. Um, yeah, they, uh, let's see something nice, something nice, something nice. Um, something nice. They lost to Penn state by only 10 points. Hmm. It might, might've been their, their second best game. <laughs> But yet, but yet they have they Kyle, have, Kyle, that's that's their first best game. A 10 loss, 10, 10 loss or a 10 point loss to Penn State's better than a three point win over Nebraska. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I mean, one thing one thing they have going for them, though, Jared, they had a uh, one possession loss to Duke, one possession loss to um, Southern Illinois, <laughs> a, one possession loss to Miami of Ohio. You know, one possession loss to Maryland. So, yeah, a couple of the games, they're, they're right in it, though. In the month of September. Right. In the month of September, Northwestern lost Nebraska. to... <laughs> lost to Miami of Ohio. Lost to Southern Illinois. Lost to Duke. And beat Nebraska. And this is why Scott Frost doesn't have a job anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not 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 a not a great great team here. But uh, I tell you a name that uh, that yeah. Northwestern has um, played really well here, and that's their uh, their second, uh, or actually their uh, their main running back, uh, Evan Hall. He's kind of their all purpose player. No matter. He's he's leading the team and rushing yards. He's also leading the team in receptions. That's right. The, the running back, Evan Hall, leads the team in receptions. Yeah. Uh, running back, Gangland. Evan, I'm going to cry. <laughs> uh, Gangland asks, are they the new Nebraska of one possession games? Oh, no. They lost yeah. to Iowa by 20. They lost to Wisconsin by 35. Um, all of those one possession games were against the 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 likes of Southern Illinois and, and Miami. Probably the worst one is that last one. Iowa, who had like no offense, finally found some offense and scored 33. Uh, that's OK. OK, what's worse? What's worse? Allowing Iowa to score 33 points on you. Or losing to Southern Illinois. It, it's still losing to Southern Illinois. It's, okay, okay, we can we, okay. we can we can we can joke around and all that, but it, it, it's losing to Southern Illinois. But I'll tell you, the second thing that the second thing Northwestern has going for them, Jared. Yeah. Uh, that is the uh, the weather forecast for this weekend. That's right. We're talking about weather, Jared. Your favorite thing about the podcast here. As, long, about as long as it's relevant to the game. It is relevant to the game. So so what that's fine. I'm okay with that. Is it here? When I when I look, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up real quick here. Um weather Chicago for this weekend. And it says this Saturday it will be high of about 60 degrees, chance of rain 80%, winds 20 to 30 miles an hour. Not not, what? not not a good not a good day if you're a um, a pass heavy offense. 
Well, thank God Ohio State's playing Northwestern. Um, the <laughs> are they playing in a dome yet? Are they playing in a dome yet? Not yet. Not okay. yet. Um, that that goes to um our first question here uh, from Austin. Uh, there's a decent chance. There's a decent chance for rain. Just mentioned that. How does this affect Ohio State's game plan and running it game that has been struggling? I know it's Northwestern, but you still have to play the game. It's Northwestern. I know it's Northwestern. Yeah, you 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 can. You you can stop right there. Like I understand Ohio State struggled to run. Like, <laughs> Buckeye Matt says bubble screens. You know, I'm not ready to joke about that yet. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to say too soon. That's too soon, man. That's too soon. Um, oh God, the fucking bubble but, screens. But, the- but, uh, but it's Northwestern. I don't care. It's North. Iowa scored 33 points on this team. How many points can Ohio State score while not through? How- Honest, it, it, honest it, it, to God question, honest to God question. How many points could Ohio State score in this game if they just choose to never throw the ball? Being how the weather is, I just running the ball, I, I, I think I think they could score <laughs> at least one bubble screen. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think they could I think they could score right around 40 points just running the ball. Just running the ball. I think they could score 40. And that number goes up to like 65 if you're allowed to throw like 10 yard slants to Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, as as long as there's no bubble screens. No bubble screens. We're not no no more bubble screens. We we're not even gonna joke about bubble screens. Okay. So la- la- last weekend, uh I think it was last weekend. Yeah. Northwestern played Iowa. We just mentioned Northwestern 177 offensive yards and led up. 398 almost 400 to Iowa not not a not a good day for for Northwestern there then if you look at the the game against Wisconsin here uh they let let up over 500 yards against Wisconsin and these were two and these are two offenses that Ohio State has played and absolutely shut them down Buckeye yeah, Esquire says think, Dallin Hayden has... two touchdown official prediction. I think that's a good. I think that's a good prediction. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know, Aust- I know both, Austin, both, Austin, both is that in your over backs. unders? Because I think if yeah. if it was set at one and a half, I'm taking the over. I know both running backs are are available and is projected to play here. But yeah, that that that's another question Austin had here um, with this three game stretch coming up. Does Ohio State? Uh, should Ohio State be resting their two banged up starting running backs, giving the reins to Hayden and Chip? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I mean, but but I mean, I mean, it's it, it's it's just one thing this... that I've always I've I've always had issues with. Uh, it, and it's and I'm glad I'm not the head coach because you have to put you have to find that balance of I want to make sure my starters are getting the reps that they know the flow and. I mean, essentially being able to play a full game, because if you start playing, oh, I'm going to only play them half a game, half a game, all of a sudden you're playing, you're playing a really tough game and they're not used to playing a full game. That that could be an issue too. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you don't happen, get what's happened to, um, uh, what was it? There was that running back in the, um, was it in the NFL or, or there's like a starting running back that they put in the, Late in the fourth quarter, and he got hurt. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on who it was. It happens, but 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 also just the wear and tear of the season. You can talk about oh, are they not used to playing a full game? Okay, but if you're playing four quarters of football every single week, even if you're not getting like hurt, hurt, you're still taking hits and you're still getting banged up, and like you're still going to run into issues. Like, so you can play both sides of that. Right. Um, Tommy pickles was practicing with a cast slash brace this week. Well, if they need to take a week off, this would be a good week to do that. Um, you're, you're a hater, Austin. Um, let's see. I thought I saw something else in here. 
I wanted to hit on, maybe not. So, so, the, so the other player here, I know we mentioned the quarterbacks here, going to most likely see Brendan Sullivan play. Uh, Evan Hall is their main running back. Uh, Cam Porter is another running back that Northwestern tends to give some of the workload to. Uh, not worried about their wide receivers, uh, Malik Washington and Donnie Navarro. Uh, 470 yards, 230 yards to each of them. Not worried. Probably the one thing to, that I think the Northwestern has going for them is that they have a first, a legit first round offensive tackle. And on Peter uh, Cernoski, uh definitely a, a first, first round, potentially a top 10 pick. We'll see. Duncan asks, are those season stats? <laughs> those are all season stats. Yes. All right. Um, it's, speaking of season stats, speaking but, but of season Evan, stats. So, so, so Washington has 470. Who reception. are you, Mies? Interrupting then, uh, me like that? <laughs> Navar- yes. And then Navarro has 230 yards, but their, their running back has the second most reception yards with 461. So Evan Hall, I mean, spoiler alert, Evan Hall is your enemy player to watch here. Like, there really is nobody else on that team that you should really be worried about on that offensive side. Speaking of season stats, Northwestern, let's talk. We we're, we're, we're climbing on their offense and like, rightfully so, but points per game points per game. Um, 17. Yeah, 17 uh, places them 120th in the country. It's not it's not it's not Iowa bad. Is it not? I, I look it up, Kyle, look it up. Uh, <laughs> give me a moment. It's going to be a moment. <laughs> uh, go, go to go to team rankings. Make sure it's at least yeah, apples yeah, yeah, to apples yeah. on the because that's where I'm pulling these stats. Um. Yards per game, 360, which places them 88th in the country. And I'm going to go ahead and say this. Them being 88th in the country in yards per game, that is their best offensive category. It's their only... (laughs) Um... It's, it's it's their best offensive category. Um, points per play, 122nd. Yards per play, 4.7, placing them at 105. Red zone scoring percentage. You might be wondering, well, how how are they uh why how are they putting up all of these yards to achieve the high high rank of number 88? Number 88. But but be 120 in points. Uh, Well, their red zone scoring percentage, and this is just scoring, not touchdown, just scoring uh, at 72%. Yowch. So uh, we were were joking about this during the Iowa game about, well, if if, uh, Iowa didn't play a F an FCS school, they, uh, uh, they'd have a worse points per game. Southern Illinois. I mean, it's Northwestern also played Southern Illinois, which was above their average. <laughs> so if you, if you don't, so if you're going by what you're looking at here, Jared, where they don't include the, um, the FCS schools here. Yes. Uh, Iowa technically has a better offense in terms of points per game. But if you, if you, what's what's the number? um, So points per game. Oh, I just had it up here. Iowa is scoring 16.4 points per game. Ah, So the massive Northwestern offense is getting an extra sixth of a point per game. (laughs) Massive. Yeah, so not good, not good. Yards right, per uh, rush, they're 120th. 
um yep. yards per pass they're a, they're number 100 yeah not not good offensively here though so defensively jared if if we're talking about northwestern you you're, you're talking about the linebackers then their their main linebackers are the the heavy lifters here in Bryce Gallagher and Xander Moeller leading the team in tackles, leading the teams in tackle for loss, and heck, even leading the team in interceptions as well, too. They're they're your do-it-all uh linebackers. Oh, uh, I mean uh, Buckeye Esquire says uh great not great linebacker names, to be honest. Yeah, Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> So looking at statistically here, Northwestern's defense actually actually does pretty good when it comes to um, to the passing defense here. They are 13th in um, – oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm misreading that. Actually, the opponent's completion percentage, they are 49th. So not, not, not terrible, but they're holding uh, teams under 60% uh, completion rating. Um, they of oh, scrolling down here their yeah. rushing Opponents. defense here they're, they're rushing their rushing defense they are they are very susceptible to the rushing attack they are averaging 4.8 yards per rush which puts them at 111th to be fair not, yards per pass they're 98th it's not that much better <laughs> yeah this is this is a bad team, guys. I think what we're trying to say is this is a, this is this is not a good football team. Um, so so what what does Northwestern need to do to make a game here? Pray. I mean, does does the rain does the rain help them out at all, or yeah. is the rain just going to the really weather's a neutralizer, Ohio, or is the rain going to help Ohio State out more? No, no. If this game was, if you're the more talented football team which Ohio State clearly is, weather will only hurt. Weather is a neutralizer. If you're an amazing football team, your ideal scenario is in a dome. Do ducks neutralize? No, ducks are not weather. So the, the point here is that if you're trying to build a chaos scenario for Ohio State, okay, let's let's make the case. Let's build let's build a chaos, a chaos scenario for Ohio State. Chaos scenario. Um, it's Chicago. It's windy. It's wet. It's a Big Ten West game on the road, which is bit Ohio State in the past how this is at noon so it's not a night game that will help but the bad weather on the road ohio state's obviously gonna go into this game not with a hunt like they're human beings like you can say you should go into every game like you're gonna lose it and you can go into every game with the urgency and focus that you should if you were going up against penn state or michigan Okay, yeah, you're right. You should do that. But they're human beings. They're not gonna they're not gonna take the game as seriously as they would Penn State or Michigan. It's it's just psychology. You're just not there. You're not quite that crisp when you know you don't have to be. All right, you got bad weather. You got wind, you got rain, you're on the road, and you're taking the team a bit lightly. Now, the weather could change. Kyle and I right now are existing uh, on, on Wednesday, November 2nd. And so the game for us is several days away four days away uh (laughs) gangland just now figuring out it's november 
So the weather can change. So the weather can change. Okay, in all honesty, Jared, too. Like, anytime anytime that we talk about bad weather, oh, it's going to hurt Ohio State. Uh, anytime there's a bad weather, it's they're they're going to be too one one dimensional, and that's not who they are. They're going to they're not going to play that well. Northwestern's going to have to play the same in the same weather too, and their rushing but attack it's a, is not. But it's that, a it's attack, a talent neutralizer attack, though. It it is, but but Ohio State dominates on the rushing defense as well too. Like I I feel so confident in our in our front six there. Like I, it's, I'm not worried if, if uh, Northwestern tries to run it down Ohio State's throat. I, I feel very confident that Ohio State's going to um, be there for the challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I'm, 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 I'm like literally attempting to build a chaos scenario for Ohio State. I'm trying to build the case. I'm not saying I believe it. Because at the end of the day, this Northwestern team's awful. Now, I, th- I think the question is, Jared, the the weather that's forecasted to be, I think, is maybe good enough or worse, depending on how you want to look at it, for no- Northwestern to maybe cover. Yeah, and like when we come to that conversation... Yeah, I think that does make the 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 line a little more interesting. And Austin typed out what I was thinking. Worst team Ohio State's played so far this year? Maybe. It might be. Jared building a case he doesn't believe typical. <laughs> I yeah, it's a, it's a podcast. How else am I supposed to make Northwestern interesting? And I look you at the can't. Rest of Thank you. At, I'm not going to call. And I look it, at uh, Northwestern's rest of their schedule. Oh. There's, I don't see a single victory the rest of the season for them. I'm looking at their past schedule and I don't see a, a victory because North <laughs> Nebraska doesn't count. I don't acknowledge the legitimacy of Nebraska as a football program. Of course, Jared, living on in your um, own world. That was in week zero. Zero literally is the symbol for something not existing. Prove me wrong. All right, Jared. Uh, I think we should move on to our uh, to our picks, unless you have anything else you want to talk about Northwestern. Uh, I mean, I don't know. No, I don't. Okay, really right, fine, fine. We're, we're moving on. Really, uh, this week's really guest picker about. is. And he's in and he's in our chat here. Uh, he changed his name though, but it's Buckeye Matt. Hey yo, hey. So Buckeye Matt will be picking for with us in uh, today's episode as well as Friday's sloop picks as well. So let's get started, Jared. Ohio hey, State yeah. player to watch in this game. Who do you have? I'm um, gonna go Luke Whipler. Ohio State needs to get their interior offensive line back on track. Um, it starts with the center. Uh, th- if this is a game, if this is a game in which the weather is as bad as it could be, as it might be, uh, it might be a game in which you need to run, and Ohio State's going to need to get some push, get some little, little, just a little bit of forward momentum going in that interior of the offensive line again okay matt you can you can you can post something while we're talking here uh yeah no absolutely the interior line we we mentioned it a number of times and especially uh on monday's episode just ripping on the interior about how how bad they played especially on the the uh running attack there so yeah this hopefully this is a confidence boost type of game for that interior line to start fixing the issues that they have. Now, my, my player to watch. I, I'm, I really want to just say the running backs, but I'm, I'm going to go with chop. I think chop is uh, going to be your best running back for this type of game. Uh, and as long as he's, he's healthy and you, you give him the ball, he's, he's going to be able to get four or five yards easily. Every, every play here. So I'm going. I'm going to go with uh, Brian Williams. Yeah, and 
uh, you know, well, they, 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 yeah, he, he, he may not play. Um, they may, they may keep him out, but I'm, I'm, I think chop is your best running back for this kind of game though. But he's the coaches say that he's, he's available to, to play, but of course row number one, Jared, but if I'm picking a player, I'm going to go with chop, but it's, it's the running backs. Well, yeah. Uh, Austin says Dr. Lies. Sleepcast rule number one, the doctor lies. Acknowledged. But I think it's worth noting that I think it's worth noting that Chop basically said on social media the day of the Penn State game, he's like, hey, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. How many rushing yards if we just play Rossi at tailback? <laughs> Like you joke, but if if mine Williams can't go this game, like <laughs> over over there aren't that many running backs on the team right now. The over the over under is six point five, Jared. Ohio State can't even keep their walk on running backs healthy at the moment. So right, Matt Matt says here, uh, player to watch is Stroud. I want to see how he adjusts to shitty weather. Weather plays a factor every NFL year, and I'm. And I'm sure scouts want to see how this may affect him. Really excited to see him shine. Whether quarterbacks tend to struggle. Yeah, no, it it. Yeah, I, I honestly, I mean, I think Ohio State will definitely run a lot more in this in this game. But I mean, those those still those still pass. They'll still go to their passing attack that they uh, typically go to. But yeah, I'm really curious on how Stroud's going to handle a, a shitty weather like this. But I once again want to point out that it's like Wednesday. We're we're four days away from the game, and it can change. It can yeah, change. like the weather, uh, our weather is not looking good. It's twenty. It's twenty twenty two, and our weather prediction still sucks. So like whatever, right? Um, yeah, poor Kathy. Right. This would have been a good game for him. Um, and by the way, um, we didn't see Stroud play in a ton of weather last year. Um, the, the Michigan game was obviously bad weather, uh, and he played, he played he, yeah. Despite what some people might think, he played incredibly well in that game. Yeah. For the record. All right, moving on to enemy player to watch. I mentioned him already. It's Evan Hall. Evan Hall is the correct answer for, uh, the enemy player to watch. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to disagree with that. Um, I'm going to go with their linebacker Gallagher um, <laughs> leads the team in solo tackles, leads the team in total tackles, leads the team in assisted tackles, um, has one and a half sacks and an interception this year. The correct choice, Jerd. Well, I didn't need your approval, Austin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't. I gangland you better be kidding with that will levis thing their linebackers are basically their defense yeah they're li <laughs> like we're 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 joke we're, we're 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 i mean we're we're joking but we're also telling the truth that like this this is not a good football team this is not a good defense they act their linebackers are actually legitimately talented you know but what 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 can what can a couple good players on a defense do nothing yeah. uh i know yes, you're yes. joking gangland um pat fitzgerald he is my player to watch he may have to suit up just to give northwestern any type any type of momentum going <laughs> i you know I'd, I'd i'd pay to see that i'd pay to see that i'd pay actual money to see that would well, anyone notice if fitz did suit up I think yes. he's still in playing form. <laughs> Listen, the bar's not that high on the current squad. If he goes in and plays linebacker, it can't be that bad of a drop off. No, yeah. they're, they're linebackers. We, we either good. talked their about it last year, good. Jared, or two years ago. It was like who, like if you put all the coaches in a ring, who would come oh, out yeah. on top? It's Fitzpatrick. <laughs> you don't, you don't miss what you don't mess with Fitz, him at all. Fitzgerald, but yeah. Fitzgerald, <laughs> yes. God damn it. All right, moving on. A key matchup, Jared. Wait, are, are we doing yeah. weight classes? Cause no. And then you know, move forward. Moving forward. Yeah. Key matchup, Jared. The key matchup is uh 
It's the weather. No. Uh-uh. Objection. It's the weather. Objection. I, I, I need some support. I need some support here. Objection that. form. I, I, uh, weather is a, is a key matchup. Objection form. Is that the correct objection? Sustained. Sustained. I think I think that means I win. <laughs> it does. Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, Kyle, I'll rephrase. Um, key matchup is uh, bad weather. That it's literally the same. <laughs> Um, objection day, content of court day versus the bubble screens <laughs> day versus the bubble screens is funny it's still not an answer though uh i'll i'll answer and you can think i'll take the interior of ohio state's offensive line versus the defensive tackles of northwestern do, do, do you want to say their main uh defensive tackles name there jared nope i, I put it up in the show notes not even gonna try <laughs> anybody anybody else want to uh uh want to give that they don't have voice they don't have voice privileges kyle they literally can't give it a shot <laughs> all right uh <laughs> key matchup i it, it's it's keeping evan hall at at bay He's he's their main source of their offense. Like I mentioned he has over a thousand yards of total offense, and no one comes close to him. So Evan Hall it's versus the defense. I'll, I'll just say the linebackers. I'll just say the linebackers. <laughs> Buckeye Matt says Hall versus the DTs. Um. OGs? No, no, I no, OGs? because because he's he's OCs? he's going to get like he's going to get screen passes. He's going to be available in the passing game oh, too. It's Hall. not just the DTs. Hall, Hall, Hall. Oh, Hall, Hall. No, Hall. I think he Hall, Hall, Hull. Yeah, this is, we yeah. last thing we need is two Ohio kids trying to differentiate between <sighs> vowel sounds. Let's please move forward. All right, we're moving forward to the spread. So the spread here, and I have this off because I did not put it in. So let me go, let me go to our uh, our pick'em that we use, uh, CBS Sports Pick'ems, and it it locked down at thirty eight and a half points. Jared, do you yeah. want to go first, or do you want me in your final score? The only thing that makes me nervous here is the game, or I mean the weather that is predicted for the game. Um, if not, I'd be like 38 points. Rack it up. Give me Ohio State. But the weather, the weather has me a bit, a bit concerned. Uh, okay. But I'm still going to pick Ohio just because you know what? I'm betting against the weatherman and betting for the Buckeyes. I say it's going to be 52 and sunny or partially sunny. It's Chicago in November. I think partially sunny is about the most. I think that's about as best as we can hope for, but it's going to be 52 and sunny ish. All right, what's your final score? Because I was about to write 52 as your score. <laughs> well, since you bring it up, 52 to 7. 52 to 7 is not a nice, Jared. Oh, what Someone do you... Someone boo him. <laughs> I know it's not, but... Like, Northwestern's not going to score 17 points. And Ohio State's not going to score 62 points just because Day is not quite that evil. In this game, Jared, I don't think I, I do not think Northwestern will get a touchdown. I, I, I don't think, think their starters get a touchdown. 
I, I don't think they're going to some get, some BS touchdown, touchdown at all. Uh, I think Ohio State's going to be able just to Northwestern's not going to really be able to do anything at all, and they're going to have to rely on Hall to to do everything. And yeah, Ohio State's just going to be able just to surround him and contain him there. I have Ohio State forty nine, Northwestern nine. Sorry, guys, we're going low scoring on this one. I know you guys like the bit, but. Which sometimes the bit doesn't hold up. So with both of us, it is a cover. So let's see what Buckeye Matt says. He says, it's going to be nice seeing our offense not be super one dimensional for a third week in a row. Ohio State could have 1000 yards total offense if we really wanted to in this game. Facts. We will rush for 200 and throw for. Another 300. Marvin will have another three. Oh, he says before I saw the forecast, by the way. Uh, no, Marvin don't will worry, the weatherman's always wrong. Yeah. Marvin will have another three touchdown game, and our defense will have their first game this season where they won't allow any type of offensive score. Ohio State will cruise to 9 0 in cover, winning 63 to nothing. Sorry, Fitzy. If Ohio State wanted to do that, they could. But I just don't see this team putting up a ton of effort. Six for the bit. <laughs> just. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, Buckeye Matt, this is your opportunity. Since Kyle and I both failed on the bit, I'm giving you an opportunity uh, to either give Northwestern six points or Ohio state an additional six points. There it is. He's changing his score prediction to 69 to nothing. All right. Perfect. All right. Um, so that is our, our picks here and we move on to the next part of our episode and it is everyone's favorite. Austin asks or the Austin over and unders, excuse me, the Austin over unders. Uh, so he says here, Helensky's Hope Foundation Edition. Uh, please visit their website, he says. Uh, Ohio State's total carries in this game. Uh, 41 and a half total rushes. Uh, over. That feels like a lot. Over. Um, Ohio State rushing. Average uh, is 35 and a half. So six more rushes in this game. Yes, over. Yeah, especially if the weather. And they'll be up. Yeah, over. over. Do sacks count? Yes, they do. But are they going to get a sack? Yes. All right, uh, next one here. Northwestern pass completion percentage over under 58.49. Under. I'm going to say over just because uh, their other quarterback, Sullivan, is actually uh, actually has one of the highest percentages in the Big Ten right now. He has like over 73% completion percentage. Granted, he's only... Uh, attempted like 60 some passes 71 okay. 71 excuse me <laughs> it's all uh, good i just happened to be staring at it but yeah it's it uh, over 73 uh completion so uh, good good uh good over under there but i i think i'll go over i think i'll go over yeah um if you if you look gonna get at those going to get if, those short passes, those uh, screen passes to Hall, it's going to really help that percentage. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't see it. I don't see it. I, this is going to be a total chaos game for Northwestern. Um, all right. No. All right. Uh, Tui Malau tackles, not including sacks at two and a half. Mm, it's, it's like an easy over. It it does. But uh, imagine imagine uh, Austin has something here where he, he averages, he averages less, than, less two. than two. Yeah. I I mean I figure that. But this is not a game in which you're gonna see the running back get to the second level a lot. 
He was averaging 1.2 before last week. And the averages include the sacks, and you've already removed the sacks. As much, so as much as I want to say over, I think it's under. And I think Ryan Day, was it Ryan Day or was it Coach Knowles? It was one of the two this week mentioned about uh, he's he's trying to find the the alpha in, in this defensive line. And the past four weeks here, it's always been somebody different. <laughs> so I, I feel that it's going to be, I think it's going to be somebody else who's going to really step in here. Um, maybe, maybe we see another, um, maybe we see Sawyer. Maybe Sawyer is the one that uh, finally steps in to, to get a lot of uh, stats in, in there. Hayden um, Curry game. I don't, I don't dislike that take. <laughs> By the way, the whole idea of someone being an alpha or not is based off of disproven wolf science and is stupid. Next question. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe we'll get another great game from my call. Maybe maybe Zach Harrison. That I there's just too many big names for for uh, to allow to have another great game. But maybe he will. Maybe he will. But I'm going to go with under. Hold on, I have to do a thing for Gangland. This is this is no, just me. No, you don't, Jared. Jared, you don't. Jared, Jared, Jared. Jared you Gangland, don't. what's Jared. a ligma? No, oh my God, I didn't see it coming. All right, uh, Gallagher tackles at nine and a half for the game. Uh, I'm going to go over. Yeah, I'm going to go over as well. Because because it's going to run the ball a lot. And someone's got to make the tackles. Someone's got to tackle. Yeah. And he'll, it'll Northwestern be him. turnovers at two and a half. Actually, I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over with the turnovers. Ohio State's found something with the turnovers here, and I'm I'm going to say they're going to they're going to keep that up here. So I'm going two and a half. I'm being optimistic. Let's see turnover statistics for Northwestern. They typically give it away twice a game. 2.1 times per game to be precise, which places them 116th in the country. Uh, give me the over. All right. Ruggle field goal attempts at one and a half. Under. I'm going to go under. I'm going to go under here. God, I hope it is zero. <laughs> second, the second half, though. The second half. All right, and the last one, Harrison Ibuka and Stover receptions at 12 and a half. Over. I'm gonna say under. Oh, yeah. Her mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I misread that. Yeah, under. Under. Sorry, I misread that. Wait, what 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 do you think you misread? Marvin Harrison, Emeka Buka, Stover. So oh, I mean the wait, three primary yeah. pass receivers. Yeah, yeah, no, over. Yeah, over. I'm going over. I'm going under. Um, I think this is a game in which they will probably try to run first. And I think this is a game in which a lot of those guys don't play a ton in the third, fourth quarter. Yeah, I gotta find where this was. Oh, it was um uh Eleven Warriors posted it here. Cade Stover has 24 receptions and 309 yards and three touchdowns through eight games. Shit you not. I shit you not. He is on pace to have one of the, the, the best tight end seasons in Ohio State history. That's it. Wait a minute. Is could the legend be true? Low bar, but nice. Yeah, that's 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 accurate. The, the record, the record for single season receiving yards, six hundred and seventy one yards by Bill Anders in nineteen sixty six. I would have assumed that was Ricky Dudley's Every, everyone, record. Everyone's favorite tight end, Jeff Howerman, six four hundred and sixty six yards uh, nine years ago. Uh, the legends appear to be true. It is finally the year of the tight end. It's pronounced Anders. All right. Um, moving on <laughs> here. So actually, those are all the questions because those other ones we answered during the uh, 
the episodes. Yeah, get those year of the tight end emotes in here. Lay them in here. <laughs> you got anything else, Jared? God, I hope this game's a total obliteration. Yes. I, just, I need this game to be a, a, a total obliteration. That's, you know, it's, it's, you know, the Penn State game was what it was and the Iowa game was what it was. You know, we had to come in here and say, guys, these are actually good defenses. I was actually legitimately one of the best defenses in the country. Penn State has the best secondary in the country. And like trying to like strangle people into like, this isn't going to be easy. And then people still like not listening to us and still like, oh, my God, why wasn't this easy? This game okay, should yeah. be easy. This game should, should be easy. Unless, of course, the weather fucks things up. But this game should be easy. Congrats on level 11, Matt. Today is your day. Jared keeps saying weather. This episode's dedicated to Sun Card. <laughs> uh, th th right. That's going to be difficult. That's going to be difficult, Matt. And I did confirm, um, I think somebody mentioned about Eichenberg in a, a, a caster brace. Yeah, he, he was having like a support around his wrist arm, his left one to be precise. So I'm sure he's fine. We'll see. I'm sure he's fine. I'm sure he's fine. Yeah. All right, Jared, go ahead and head us out here. Head us out. Um, yeah. I uh, want to let everyone know that uh you can head over to spotify to apple podcast anywhere you find podcasts you can find this podcast and i'm telling specifically the youtube audience this because you probably already what is spreaker spreaker is our hosting service it is our hosting service uh, but they they host it and then it gets distributed elsewhere uh, I think they're technically owned by our iHeart Radio, so it's it's now it is now iHeart Radio's podcast wing. Uh, Spreaker is the plug, is what I'm hearing. No, no. Um, <laughs> come visit the come visit our Discord server um discord.thesloopcast.com i'm literally just reading whatever thing pops up in our um little our little rotating advertisement section here uh pay three dollars on patreon uh or be labeled a teton sympathizer yeah that's that's the thing we might do to you that's an actual role in the server we hand it out as a punishment um that, and yeah, three dollars to join the patron, to join Patreon, become a patron of the show, get get to listen to our like super secret episodes, get your very own custom RSS feed that you can plug into your podcast app, and that way you don't get those annoying ads that that play before and during the show from Spreaker. Um, so you so you can why what Gangland? How come when you tag the teton sympathizer um it it it, it highlighted it for me this time or is someone abusing their mod their mod powers yes. again gangland yes jared yes kyle there's a conspiracy happening i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and ask you we'll, what's in we'll, kyle's corner we'll, we'll take care of it we'll take care of it offline here jared yeah, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just let you, you, you just let us know what's in Kyle's corner. All right, uh, Ohio State basketball started, Jared. Well, at least the exhibition. Uh, <laughs> uh, they took on a Division Two opponent, uh, Chaminade. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, 101 to 57. They were, they are the Silver Swords. How about that for a, for a. For a mascot, the Silver Swords. I like that a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. un unironically, I like that a lot. Ohio State shot 55% from the field. 
uh, only shot 10 free throws in the whole game. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and a lot, a lot of new names in, in basketball this year. Uh, we'll, we'll cover more about, we'll cover more basketball once the football season's over. But I mean, we'll, we'll still, we'll still talk a little bit about basketball, but once football season's done, we'll really get into the basketball season though. But, but yeah, the basketball team is officially starting. All right. All right. All right. That's it. That's the end of the episode. Um, tonight's ending music brought to you by a uh, Columbus based band called the turbos. That's the turbos. Uh, they're from Columbus. They're an alt rock band. They're fun. Stick around. Listen to them. If you're listening to this on uh, the podcast version of the show, if you're watching us on. If you're watching us on uh, YouTube, we don't you don't get to you don't get to hear the music, but there is a link down in the show notes. So if you want to listen to the song, just uh, click that link. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music and, of course, support your local podcasters once again. This is the Turbos.